Hi, I'm Nick Komen, and today I'm inviting you to join myself and fellow fiber artist Chase Wong as we teach a class on folding fabric for dyeing. This Dragonfly Creative class involves techniques for several styles of folding. This will include some more advanced styles of folding like mandalas or shibori style folding. We discuss design and dye application, and while we use ice dyeing, any type of dyeing may be used with these folds. I hope you'll spread the word to your friends and family, anyone who would enjoy this class, and make sure and go to the Facebook page and tell us about your experience. So if you're ready to learn and get creative, I look forward to seeing you in class soon. Chase and I have been dyeing together for years and years, and one of the questions that we get asked the most often is, how do you do that pattern? So what we're going to do today is give you about seven of the most popular patterns that we do as dyers. And you can use this with liquid dye, you can use this with ice dyeing, you can use this with pretty much any sort of coloring of the fabric. Now, to get started, Chase is gonna show you one that we call stained glass window or triangles. In front of me, I have a one yard cut of fabrics already been pre-soaked and you don't have to worry about soaking anymore and it sort of, sort of ash in it, but it's a little dry. Usually we start this with a little bit damp because the weather in Colorado here is dry, so it dries up very quickly. For the start, I'm going to try uh, to work with you on this kind of fold, I call it a stained glass. And here we go. So first of all, I'm going to slide this down a little bit so I get more room to work me in front. I'm going to, first one, I'm going to Fold it at about two and a half inches or three inches wide. Depending on the width of the fabrics, if it's a bigger fabric, then you want to make it the fold a bit bigger. If it's a smaller fabric, you make it a little smaller. So here is a smaller fabric, so the fold is a little smaller. So here we go. First one, you, you pull it forward on top, and then the next fold, you want to fold it on the behind you. And there are many ways to do this, and this is probably one of the easiest ones. So make it flat and keep going. And the idea is to get the look like an accordion when you finish with the folding. Oh, so this is like a fan pleat. Exactly. So here we go. So now we got the last one down. So it's okay if your last fold isn't quite the same as your other ones? I try to make it as precise as you can, but if it doesn't, there's nothing wrong. Everything is just different. So at the end, you'll see the accordion fold. See that? Now, we're gonna pull it towards you, the one end, and then this is how you're gonna start manipulating the fabric. First, you wanna pull one end like a triangle. Flat neck like a diamond shaped triangle. Okay, now from there, there are many ways you can make this work, but I like to fold it from behind and pull back from the top. And you just keep repeating this fold until you finish. There we go. And I just move it a little faster. Okay, let me try that. There you go. Because this one has always given me fits. <laughs> So that way, and then come and make another triangle. Yeah. So you fold under the uh, first time, just directly under, yeah, and then you have to make a brand new triangle when you come to the top again. Exactly. Okay, that, that's easy. I'm gonna show you again how it looks like a fan out. So when you're done with the folding, you come out with this little nice fan look like an accordion on either side. So if you have an extra at the end, just go ahead and pull that in and make sure the whole thing is even. We're ready to put the rubber band. You can just use one rubber band and fold in two sides. And the rest of them is just how you apply the dye. So how do you apply the dye? What sides do you apply the dye on if you want to get okay. something like that? This one that we did yesterday. Um, first, you choose to start right on the top of the fabric that you fold, right on the top. You apply one color here, and you repeat this color to the two ends. 
the triangle ends, and then you choose one color to fill up the gap in between. So that's how have you get these two colors, the turquoise and the purple. Oh, cool. Okay. So that's how that is done. So now we're gonna show you the wandering line. To start with, with the wandering line, you're gonna learn how to do pleats like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take those pleats and I'm going to show you how to take them in a nice curve right across whatever piece of fabric you're working on. So this is just the diagonal pleating. So this would be the pleating. If I had actually done this as a line, the line would have been straight across from corner to corner, okay? And then I would have just pleated this and that would have given me my straight line. But this is what the pleating looks like. This is an example of a wandering line done on a garment. And you can see in this one that that wandering line goes from this arm all the way across the chest, down, and then around to the hem, right there. So that is the wandering line. And then we just crumpled up on either side of that wandering line. We didn't do anything else fancy. So that wandering line is just right there, and that's the pleats that we see just like there. And this gives you the basis for some of the other ones that we'll be doing later. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of Taylor's chalk it can be tailor's chalk, it can be um, washable uh, markers. Those work real well, kids' washable markers. And just draw a line to follow on here. So I'm gonna come from one edge, and I'm gonna just curve around where I want this line to go. So that's a nice gentle curve, and we're going to just pleat all along there. So all I do is I start at the edge, and my goal is to make this line appear straight when I am done. So I'm just going to pleat. Now how big you pleat is up to you. You can do big pleats or you can do really small, smaller pleats like I'm doing and they don't have to be regular. They can be irregular kind of pleats or they can be sort of more regular. It just depends on the, the look you want to get, okay? And so now I just come around that corner and I keep pulling that blue line towards me. Notice okay. that it has the line all become straight because we have this circular line. Now he wants to make the older line, the blue line become a straight line. But what that's going to do is make sure that when I put any color over that line, or when I dye this generally, um, it's going to follow that curve all the way around. Okay, so I've got that all done. Now, sometimes we use rubber bands and sometimes we use things to tie with instead. So what I'm gonna do is I'm taking the yarn and I'm going to wrap, wrap it around here really tight. And that's going to hold that line in place so that it doesn't move while we're manipulating it with the die. And then once I do that, I'm going to get it all in place and I'm going to pull it really good and snug. Now, how tight do you want that string? To now, pull? normally I will pull this, I'll pull the string as tight as I can without breaking it. So, okay. and that's one of the reasons that when we're doing bigger pieces, we really do like the sinew. The sinew tends to have a little more strength, don't you think? Yeah. So when we're doing large pieces like mandalas, um, we'll oftentimes use the sinew because it's incredibly strong and we can really, really pull. So when we have a very thick piece of fabric, we um, are able to then really, really get it tight and have that good resist. So. I've got the line. Now what do I do with the rest of the fabric? Well, I can either keep pleating this and I can move out to smaller, uh, maybe less distinct pleats just by coming through here. And if I do that, I could tie those or I could put rubber bands in them. So if I wanted to keep those pleats going out to there, I would just put a rubber band in here 
and then just tie all the way around there. So what I did was I, I have all those pleats there and I have a rubber band going around there, okay? And then basically I'm just going to twirl that rubber band all the way around here. I can use this. I could use the string as well to do that, but I twirl that rubber band all the way around there and then pull that tight and now I've got that. Once I have that done, what I'm going to be able to do is figure out what I want to do with the rest of the fabric there. And the rest of that fabric, I think I'm going to just crumple. So I'm just going to crumple all this fabric up just like you would to get a funky crumple design. And you crumple all that up and then you just take a rubber band. Now the rubber band is not to act as a resist. The rubber band in this case is to just hold the crumple in place. On this side, I think maybe I'm gonna just do a different pleat design. You can do whatever you want here. And the main thing is that that one line down the center is going to be very, very pronounced. And then the rest of this will be just as is. So the main focus is in that string. The main focus is in the center, right there. So I'm gonna just give that a little tie. And then I'm going to go ahead and wind the rest of this down here. And this is going to give just some unusual folded, folded looks. And so I broke that off. And now I just pull that and do a little knot in there and we're good to go. Thank you for watching this Dragonfly Creative class. If you'd like to see more content like this, head on over to dragonflycreative.art.